As Rob has mentioned, my name is Mike Villeneuve, uh, and uh, this is actually the first class I've ever taught. So you're welcome for maybe seeing the first time or the smoke <laughs> show that it may turn into. So we'll see how this goes. If I'm crying in my car afterwards, you can maybe get a good idea. So, um, so anyways, yeah, so I've worked at Cisco now for the past uh, five years. Um, I graduated from RPI, uh, Rensselaer Polytech in upstate New York in 2013 with a, a degree in information security uh, with a focus in cryptography. I quickly learned that cryptography is way too much math and there are way smarter people than I, so got out of that game real quick. And uh, so <clears throat> uh, I previously worked for the Government Trust and Technology Services Group within Cisco, um, that essentially where I got a lot of my hands-on Splunk experience. Uh, currently right now I'm working for the Foundational Architecture and Security Technologies Org. Uh, essentially, our main focus now is how we secure DevOps payloads within uh, Cisco. So those folks who are, have DevOps or DevSecOps or whatever the key term of the month is, um, that's a lot of what I've been doing nowadays. So um, in, as in terms of my Splunk experience, I've basically deployed and maintained an enterprise Splunk environment. Um, if there's time at the end, we can kind of go, I'll kind of show you some of that stuff of what I created and what that environment looks like. And, um, I went from the data discovery portion of it all the way down to actually the full deployment um, and rollout of things such as forwarders and search heads and indexers and if you don't know what any of those terms mean right now, that's okay. We're going to cover it in a bit. So, um, so yeah, so that's a, a little about me. Um, so we're going to be using some sample data today that uh, I've gathered using my honeypot running in AWS. Um, for those of you uh, to download the data, just simply hit my S3 bucket here. Um, it's a pretty small file, it's about six megs. Uh, it's data from the past week or so, I think, from 11.5 to 11.9, 2018. Um, just as uh, with all this data, as, as, as always, um, with great data comes great responsibility. Please. You know, obviously, if you see, I, we're gonna, there's going to be IP addresses in there. There's going to be um, other data points in there. Um, don't go after those folks and stuff. Just we're it's ex uh, purely exploratory. So if you want to grab and download this uh, while we talk, uh, while I talk, um, it should be pretty quick, and uh, it w we'll uh, go we'll go from website. there. Yeah, go to that website. Uh, so it's if, for those in the back who may not be able to three, see it, it's s 3 amazon aws all one word, dot com forward slash Splunk hyphen sample hyphen data forward slash Splunk underscore data dot TGZ. And uh, if you're in your VM and you're, and you're on the command line, you can simply run wget and then that address. And that will download that file for you. So um, that's some sample data I provided for you. Uh, it, the the da data that we're going to be looking at is from Cowry, uh, Diona, and uh, Honeypot, uh, Cowrie's SSH Honeypot. Um, Honeypot is actually the more of the web uh, uh, Honeypot style, and then Dionia is uh, binary attack. So it's pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool data. I cleaned up uh, some of the stuff in there. Um, and if you have, yep. Uh, and <clears throat> and if you have more, uh, if you want to have questions about uh, running a Honeypot and what this Honeypot looks like and stuff. We can definitely talk about that later. Um, it was definitely a cool little exercise to get that stood up. Um, and I, you know what I may, you know what I can do too. It, I can write it on the board, just so that we can. Uh, Don't worry, I am not logging your addresses as, as you hit my S3 bucket. I'm getting a 404 error. A 404? Not found? A lot of paranoid people. Yeah, I usually do. From my line of work, it is, uh, it's, it's always uh, SS denied? SS denied. Access denied. Um, 
Should not be getting W gets, but we could let me we could try it real quick. We'll we'll do it. I'll do it with you guys. Yeah, so it's it's you're not going to be able to browse the way I have it set up. It's uh, you're not going to be able to. Um, you're only just going to be able to hit this file. Oh yikes! Okay, <laughs> as 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 I uh, as as I uh, was worried about the um, the internet here is slow, so that's okay. This is why we. The per so you're not going to be able to browse to the directory. You're you're. Are you? All right, let me take a look. Has everybody else been able to get it? Blown in my face already. Five minutes out of the gate. It's okay. That's what happens. That's what happens. We're doing it live. All right, let me take a look. Cause Yes. Can we run this from that VM? Yeah, you can run the you can run the download from the VM. Yes. How are you I'm doing well, thank you. I'm hope Quanta. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So uh -oh. when I tried to pull up the uh, website here, uh -huh. it was it would not load the page. What what do I need to do? But are, to are you connected to the? Are, are yeah. you on the internet? Well, I was. Okay. Um, so it should be available. Um, just make sure you type it in. It's going to be case sensitive. Okay. So try typing it out again, and if it doesn't work, just call me, and then I'll I'll come take a look. Okay. The the people just mistyped it, and it's not going to. It may not hit it. So. Stuck. Yeah, because everyone's trying to hit it right now. Um, unfortunately, this is uh, I, I. My greatest fear when I was driving over here was everyone's trying to download. Everyone's going to try to download it. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna downloading it off my my hotspot, and then I'm gonna throw it on a thumb drive for you folks. I, this was this was my greatest fear when I because I as soon as, when I drove over here I was like oh you know what's gonna happen they're gonna um, it's gonna nobody's gonna be able to download it and well oh, this is all teaching this is all good instruction I figured S3 yeah. would it was a good was a good place to host it so um, Most, the ones here are uh, just typos. Cool, perfect. Everybody else good? Good? Got now? Do I have the, can I grab my thumb drive back here? Yeah, he's using it right now. Oh, no worries, no worries. I just need one. No, you're good. It's all good. Somebody's going to blow up. Oh, oh, oh. 
Yeah, we'll cover that. We'll cover that in a, a bit later. We just want to download the data right now. Um, all right, so <clears throat> attention, everyone, attention. Um, thank you. Uh, ooh, that's the first time I ever heard a shush actually work. Um, so for um, so we have, so we have our sample data now. So so with this sample data, um, we're gonna we're gonna now. Um, uh, install Splunk, get Splunk running on our system, on our vir virtual machine, uh, and um, we're going to do our initial admin user setup, and then we're going to do um, we're going to actually log into the web UI. So, um, oh, legal. <laughs> so, uh, a little disclaimer for the course: I am not speaking on the behalf of Cisco Systems or any other entity. And the views in this presentation are mine and my alone, um, and do not represent those of my employer. No warranties are given. <laughs> Legally is over. That's it, I'm calling TAC. <laughs> yeah, don't call TAC for a problem with my class. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, if you have a complaint, uh, there's a complaints bin right over there. Um, and uh, they'll be ignored in the order they are received. Uh, so to, uh, to first install our uh, instance of Splunk, so uh, don't worry if your Splunk line right here doesn't match what mine up here is. Um, it's okay. Uh, we're going to follow the same sort of concepts nonetheless. So we're just going to simply install the package uh, and then we're going to navigate to our um, to the installation directory. So for those who have downloaded Splunk to their downloads directory, ignore me right now. Don't, don't, don't look at what I'm doing because I was bad and didn't set up the class beforehand. Cool. All right, so for those who have downloaded Splunk to their downloads directory, all you really need to do simply is just run sudo dpkg. So dpkg is their Debian package manager. And then we're going to pass the dash i flag for the install and then our package name. Splunk dash 7.2.0, blah, 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 dash Linux, 2.6, AMD dash 64 dash dev. And you have that on the other slide. Yeah, can you put the other slide back up, please? If you can't. Oh, you can't see it here? Oh, haha. -ha. Uh, yeah, so let me, let me, I'm going to run mine, and then let me pull the slide back up. There we go. And now this, uh, what this, this, so this is the installer, and this installer will do a couple things. It will put it will install Splunk to opt <coughs> Splunk, and it will create a Splunk user and a Splunk group on your system. And then once the installation's done, once your installation's done, uh, put a thumbs up. Once you're like, once you get the message, hey, your or you get back to that command line, you see a a, 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 a successful install message. And I, we'll also actually be, all these slides will also be posted afterwards, so. This is, on, uh, this is all done in your VM now. Everything we're doing from now, this point forward, is all in your VM. We're not going to be doing anything on your, on your host OS. Everything's going to be done in the VM. You should be able to tap that out, right? Uh, if, they're in that, if they're in the directory where that Splunk is installed. Yeah, dot .deb. Uh, great question. For those of you who uh, um, who have downloaded CentOS uh, and uh, want to use the RPM installer, um, it's it's a it's just a little diff bit of a different of a command, and I'll put it up here for you. Huh? I think it's what is it like? It's uh, we could use RPM, right? So it's like RPM hyphen QA. UVH is it? This is uh, this is this is real life. I am Google searching answers in the middle of class. That's how we do it, baby. That's oh yeah, IVH. That's that's right. You're right. You're right. 
So, so it would be pseudo RPM dash I B H Splunk blah 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 dot RPM. That, so I put that, don't obviously type blah, 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 but um, it, that, it, the, all that extra stuff is going to be in there. On that Linux, on the Linux file system, uh, by the way, you can, you can um, <clears throat> tab complete uh, if you're in that directory. So if you get to sudo rpm ivh splunk and hit tab, it will fill in the rest for you. Same thing up here, sudo dpkg i splunk and then tab, it should autocomplete for you. Uh, it will save your fingers. Um, there's limited mileage in these things, so um, you want to save them as much as you can. Yes. Uh, Splunk data. And voila. Um, we have it. So now, um, so Splunk out of the box can read these archive directories, um, which, is a great, which is a great tool and a great method, and we're going to look at that later. Right now, um, we're only going to, I just want to have you guys do single file upload. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to unarchive this directory. So in order to unarchive this directory, you just simply need to type tar space hyphen x to extract z. Maybe I should be doing this like quizzing. Uh, z for a gzip file. F to force. And then another space, and then the this file that we want to call Splunk Data .tgz. And as you can see, I'm about to I'm going to run this right here. XZF Splunk Data, and there we go. And now I have this new direct. I have three new directories. In here, and I'm not, I wasn't lying to you earlier, and I said we were going to be dealing. I, we have a directory called Cowry, a directory called Dianea, and a directory called Honeytrap. The, the first logs we're going to look into are the Cowry logs. So we can just type cd Cowry, and in a simple ls hyphen al. So uh, I guess this is probably a good, good point to take a little pause. How many of you uh, have unarchived? The directories or that that archive, okay? No. We we just did, just did. So if you need to download the file, you can simply just run from your command line wget and then the URL. Yes. So again, uh, simply running through. So we, we got to remember when in, in, the, in the Linux command line, you have the, the files aren't. It's not going to auto discover the files itself. So if you say downloaded the Splunk data.tgz to downloads, you first need to cd into downloads. For, in order to get this to work. Um, once you do that, or once you, once you are in the same directory as this Splunk data, you'll just copy the files over to var temp. We're going to move over to var temp, and then we're simply going to extract. Dude, I love this. I love that. And then we're going to extract our, our Splunk data in there. And then we're going to look something like what I have up here. I, did we download it? I, and I'm I'm not sure. Did everybody download it in their VM, or did they download it on their desktop? Because if it's in their desktop, it's not going to. No, I understand. Desktop. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, if you do have it on your desktop, you you want to copy it in your VM again, or download it from your VM using wget. Yes. Stand up and yell that out. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Listen up. Yeah. So, so I, I, I think I, I, mis, I misled some of y'all a little bit here, and I, I do apologize. So when you're first doing that initial copy out of your, uh, out of your downloads directory, you want to do that as your user. Uh, if you're trying to do it as the root user, um, the, the nice thing about Linux is that um, it's going to protect your, those home directories uh, from the admin user. So let me uh, give you an example of that. So let me just go to sudo su. Um, so I told you guys to copy it from your downloads directory. Uh, so if I go, 
If I go to home, Villum, downloads, see it's not going to let me do anything. Oh, it let me in. <laughs> Uh, but essentially what happens is, is the root users protect it, these home folders are protected from your admin user. So all you need to do is just simply just exit out of here and then let me just go to my, my Splunk data directory. So here's my Splunk data. So you see now I'm, I'm my user, I'm Villum, that's me. I'm not root, I'm not my root user. Uh, I, my roots went up there. So we want to do this as your user and we want to run that copy Splunk data to var temp. So if you're trying to do it, at, if you're if you're getting like permission denied or or file not found, um, you try exiting and going into your home to your uh, normal user. Um, like uh, it'll look something like that with a. The key is is this uh, little dollar sign right here at the end. Um, Uh, as you can see with my root directory, this has changed to a hash. This is some good Linux, this is some good Linux like debug. Maybe useful when it comes to uh, terms of why is a dollar sign, what's a hash sign. So when I said that dollar sign in there, what does that mean? Dollar sign means your, your regular user pound sign is broken. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll bring that up a little later. We, we catch people paying attention. Um, so, we're, so who who have downloaded? Who has the Splunk data copied to var temp? Okay. Who has extracted that data now into var temp and has those three beautiful directories: Calry, Diane, Bear, and and Honeypot. Yep. So it's going to be in your var temp folder, CD slash var slash temp and then we're gonna and then we're and then you should see after you've extracted this you should see these nice three directories don't worry don't worry about this stuff if you don't see this stuff don't worry about it this system D stuff don't worry about it it's this is junk from my system uh, this is really the what you want to focus on yes Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries. So what a tar gzip is is it, it takes uh, it takes your directories, tars it, and compresses it, and then it gzips that tar to make to create a tar gzip. All what you did was is you removed that first layer, and you were just left with the tar. So then we just needed to unwrap it one more time. So. Um, quick question. So in that tarball, what, what were all those files? Uh, the Kauri, Diana, and Honeytrap. But you said they should have three directories? Yeah. From, but how do three directories relate to those six files in the tarball? There should only be those three directories, Kauri, Diana, and Honeytrap. All those system D stuff, yeah. that, that's, ignore it. That's, that's not even relevant. Those are, those are artifacts from, the, my, from my operating system that I've ran. All those. Now here, let me do this. Oh, it won't let me do it. Here, let me see if I can. He's got all of his var temp. I don't see those other directories. Yeah, these. So these are just artifacts that my file system has created. And okay. Stuff. So these are the only. These are the meat and potatoes that we want to worry about. Right, and that's from after doing the tar extract, right? Yep. Yep. You should see those three directories. Again, don't worry about it. I, I highlighted the ones that you're going to be seeing. You, you should all see commonly within this var temp directory. There we go. What time is it? Perfect. We're actually amazingly on time, um, if, believe it or not. So uh, now that we have these these uh, directories extracted um, and uh, now in our var temp directory, now let's actually upload some of this data because um, this is. This is really where the cool stuff for, for Splunk really comes in. So um, I'm on my home screen here. Uh, we're, we're back on the web browser now. We're on my home screen. For those of you who don't, are not here on, the, on this page, um, all you really need to do is just click this Splunk Enterprise link up in the top left, and it will bring you right back to your home page. 
Um, and once, once you're on your home page, you're just simply going to click Add Data. Question over here? So, so now it's going to ask you what type of data do you want to send to your Splunk platform. So th this, is, uh, this is actually pretty cool. Um, this is really where you can um, dive into what different uh, data sources um, there are in Splunk or possibly some other ones that you want to add. We're just going to simply do upload. Upload files from my computer. Uh, and this is going to use that web functionality command that I had. So, um, if, but if, to remember, um, we have also the monitor. This is what I spoke about before. This is actually, will do those local file system monitorings for us. Don't worry about it. Forwarder, that's what I'm talking about when we get into distributed environments with Splunk, which is outside of the purview of this course. So we're simply just going to click Upload Files to My Computer. Awesome. And now it's going to ask us, where, what, what file do we want? Um, we're going to go through a, 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 we're all going to go through a certain step here. So um, we're going we're gonna to step through each of these dots until we're all at done together. So we're going to now select our file source. So we're going um, to, we're going to want, and now it's really important that we select the, the file right here, uh, correctly here. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, we're going to go to um, our, our root disk. I'll send up again. It's done it again. Oh, there we go. So all, all, all we're doing here is we're just, we're just I, all I did was as I just clicked this back, this little arrow. No, it won't let me do it now. Here, hold on, let me hit cancel. All right, here, okay. So uh, I, all I did was is I hit this little arrow in the upper left. I think you all should be able to see it now. Uh, and it brought me, it gave me this full path. I'm just going to click the disk here to just get to my root directory, right? So this is very similar to how we did on the file system. Yep, that's going all the way down to root. So here's var. So we're at root var right now. I double click, uh, or, well you could double click on var, I haven't double clicked yet. And then we want to go to temp. So your your browser, your your window should look a lot like mine. Disk icon var tip. Does it not? Who does not? I got one. That's pretty good. So we're gonna click that arrow right there. This one? Yep. And then we're gonna click the disk. The disk right there. And then we're just gonna go to var. And then um, temp right there. There you go. All right. So now that we're in our var temp directory, we're going to go into Cowry. And then we're going to go into Cowry and then log. Log. L O G, as in, does a log really roll down a hill? Yes, it does. Um, and we're going to get we're going to get greeted with a whole bunch of beautiful different folder options that we have. We're not going to worry about a lot of those right now. We're just going to focus on if I can make my window move. The Kauri hyphen text log dot log. All right, am I? Uh, all right, it seems like I'm moving too fast. Where are people stuck? Where where where? Uh, has has anybody successfully navigated to this folder directly in their in their fire in their Firefox window? Cool, great. You guys, you can get an extra cookie. Um, all right, for those of you who have not been able to locate this directory in your file browser, raise your hand. Okay, I'm going to start up front and I'm going to work my way back. Oh, okay. All right. So, don't raise your hand. All right. What's up? All right. Oh. Okay, now they can move. So just hold the question mark. 
Yeah, what's that? Um, you wrote on the board, in Jinx, is that what it's called? Nginx. Nginx, is that yeah. a way I can play with Spark at home, or can I just play with it the way we're doing it? You can play with it right the way you're doing it right now, yeah. Um, so all Nginx is, do, so I was really just uh, alluding to enterprise deployments of Splunk. Um, all that it, Nginx is, is a simple, it's like a simple web server um, or a reverse proxy. So it's a, it's a better way to secure Splunk in an enterprise, but for us when playing around at home, doing it just like this is fine. And so right now, all we're doing, all we did was compress files and then we're trying to just load Yeah, we're just gonna, uh, we're, we, uh, we uncompress them and then now we're just trying to, we're gonna upload them. Okay. So, and we're about to upload right now so um, all right so how many how many people have been able to find their their cowrie text log we all good I want to see hands 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 so don't worry this is this is gonna be the last thing before before lunch so um, uh, don't worry uh, uh, I am just as hungry as I'm sure the rest of you so now that we've located it within our file uh, upload we're just gonna hit open and we could just see our selected file has become now that cowrie text.log. And then we're just going to hit next. And now it's going to ask us to set up a source type. Well, so it, it source, source, this is, a, this is a key piece of Splunk uh, right here. So source types are going to be what you live and die by in terms of Splunk and your extractions. And I'm going to talk about what an extraction is in a minute. But essentially, we've uploaded raw data, unstructured data to Splunk. We can read it because we're humans. We understand what words mean. We know what new connection and then an IP address is. We can tell what an IP address is. Splunk doesn't know. It's a machine. An extraction is a way for that machine, Splunk, to pull out those pieces of human readable data for us so that we can perform searches across it. So source types is what tells Splunk, I need to apply these extractions against this data in order to get these results. And we're going to do all of that a bit here after lunch. But all we're going to do right now is we're going to leave the source type as default. And we're just going to hit next. And we're going to save, I beg your pardon. Oh right, yeah, we do create a source type, yes, my bad. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna name this. We're gonna create a new source type for this data because Splunk goes. I need to know what this is. I need. Uh, that's how it it, it, it classifies the two pieces of data: source type and index. Right now, we're just doing source type. So we're just gonna simply type cowrie. Simple. Source types are gonna are, are supposed to be simple. They're not supposed to be long and complex. Source types are supposed to describe what this data is. This is cowrie data. So I'm simply just going to call the source type cowrie. And this is going to be important as we go along because we're going to make adjustments to this source type and how Splunk is going to interact with it when extracting data. The category is custom, that's fine. The app searching and reporting, that's fine for now. Um, there are some more advanced things we can do with source types outside of these, but for right now, the searching app, uh, uh, searching and reporting app is fine. So we're just going to hit save. And now it's going to ask our input settings. So input settings, again, this, so this is, again, this further classification of data um, within Splunk. So input settings, host, probably the third most important thing in Splunk um, besides index and source type. So we're, all it wants us to know is, is, hey, what should this host field value be for this data now? Um, should I give it a constant value? A, should it be a regular expression based on the path? Or can it be the segment in the path that I specified? So what does that mean? Regular expression within path. Well, we, we give it the path of this uh, file that we give it. If I can find my marker. Someone stole my marker. Uh-oh. It's OK. Um, uh, so the path that we give it is, oh, I left it. Aha. So the path, <laughs> oh man. Oh, this is going wonderfully. Um, <laughs> uh, so the path that we give this data and what Splunk now has is slash var, slash temp, slash calorie, slash log, slash calorie hyphen text log 
dot log. Okay. So if I were to give this a regular expression on path, I could define a regular expression that could extract a variable from this, right? And um, I'm going to come up with a super sloppy regular expression off the top of my head. We're, don't copy this down because it's, <laughs> it's going to be bad. Uh, so I'm going to escape. So this is, this is the path. Nah, carry dollar sign. No, we're, this is just regex. This is just regex. This is nothing we're going to be doing. This is, so re regex, for those who don't know, is regular expressions. It's the way that machines are able to read data and, and be able to match things about data. It's a, it's a super powerful language. And we could spend a whole other day on regular expressions. Um, but for right now, so if we, I say I wanted to give this the, the, the host of Calvary, based on this path, I can make my regex, and again, this is going to be super ugly, but it's going to work, um, this. I could say I need to escape this slash, so backslash forward slash, and then I'm just going to put words, so slash w plus, this is what happens when you write regex, and then escape it again, so now we're here. And I'm going to just give it another slash w plus. Now w plus means right. words, any words. I'll match any word here. And then again, we're going to, so now we're about here. Again, slash to escape. And now this is where, really I, where, where I want that path to be. So I'm going to wrap this in parentheses. And then just do w plus again, and then escape out like that. And now you're like, well, wait a minute. What about all this other junk down here? Dot star. That's my beautiful asterisk. Um, all this is, and, and this is some simpler regex, and, and, it, and it's not going to be beautiful, but it's important. It built, we're going to build off of it later. All this is saying is, I want you to extract whatever's after this one, two, whatever's in this third per block of, uh, of slashes right here. Um, and I can show you that. We can, I can pull up an example uh, of a regex breakdown and stuff. This is very ugly regex. This is not very good regex. Um, don't come home and, and don't, don't go to your boss like, hey, I know regex, and start writing this stuff out. Because this is, <laughs> this is super, super inefficient. But it's quick, it's dirty, and it works. So it's good enough for me. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's fine. If you want to copy this down and be like, whoa, can I play around with this some more? Feel free. Um, a great tool for regex, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to peel off a little bit, is called regexer. I think it's .com. I put one in the chat room as well called regex101. OK, regex, yeah, regex101 is another good example. So, uh, so this is actually a really cool thing that you can do that will actually let you allow you to work on regex and see them in real time as you type. So as I said, var, uh, var temp cowrie log cowrie text log dot log. So let me try my let me try my regular expression here. So who highlighted captured captured those? Uh, can you see this? Oh, cool. All right. So I captured those um, those slashes. So now I'm just going to type slash w plus. Hoo hoo hoo. Got some more. Slashes. Oh, it's getting juicy. Slash W plus. Got some more. Escaped. Slash W plus. Where is it? Var temp calorie. Captured that whole thing. Now, in here, you'll see there's a capture group. That's what this parentheses does. This capture group allows me to specify whatever is in this group I want to be that text. That's, that's regex. And I'm, I'm going to be completely real with you guys. This is exactly what I use to help myself perform extractions on data that I have. I take a sample of that data. I copy it. I paste it in here. Obviously, I anonymize it. You shouldn't be dumping your own IP addresses into this tool. I don't know who <laughs> runs it. I don't know who does it. All I know is, is it's really useful for regexes. And then I, look, I work through it like this. And I find the lines that I want appropriately. And as you can see, this is quick and dirty, and it's simple, and, and it looks hideous, but it kind of gets the job done. So regexer.com, regex101 um, are great two resources for that, bringing it back around. 
So all I want to do, uh, there's a lot of talking, to just say leave it at constant value. It's fine. Uh, giving it the host field of Ubuntu is fine. The index, we're just going to give it into main. Main is your default index within Splunk. Everything, unless you specify it otherwise, gets thrown into main. Um, if you have some indexes that you're working with and you're like, I don't know where this data is going, check main. More than likely or not, it's, gonna, it's more of that catch-all bucket. Yes, so, okay, uh, excellent question. When, when you are deploying in an enterprise environment, um, there are, a great question to ask is, I need role-based access control for my employee types. I have engineers, I have software developers, and I have management. We want to give management the least amount of access to anything because <laughs> what do they know? Our software developers only need access to our web logs, and our systems engineers only need access to our host logs. So you can create indexes, let's say one called OS, one called web, and one called management, and assign those role-based access controls on those indexes. So think of an index as just a big bucket, those five-gallon buckets you buy at Home Depot. Those are just filled with data, and you can then say, Hey, Joe Schmo's coming in here. He's a web developer. Splunk will go, okay, there's the web bucket. That's the only one you get access to. Oh, okay, we got, an, we got a systems engineer here. Okay, OS bucket. That's the one you get access to. You cannot, and I'm going to stress this enough, you cannot do uh, role-based access based off source type. It's all based on index. So for those of you who are in a, 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 an enterprise environment, you'll, you'll do it based off of your index. And again, I'm kind of hand wave here, that there's a lot that can go into that. But um, we can cover it if there's time. And finally, we're just going to click hit review. And it's going to give us a nice little summary of what, what we're actually doing here. So we're just giving an uploaded file, the file name of text.log, the source type of Kauri, the host of Ubuntu, and the index of main. And then finally, we're just going to click submit. And then, hey, it's, it's uploaded successfully. Um, configure your inputs by going in, into settings, data inputs. Again, don't worry about that. Um, that's if you want to adjust this at all. Let's start searching. This is, this is the cool stuff. So um, you're, you may click start searching and you may get nothing and be like, oh no, there's no data. Um, that's okay. It, it takes Splunk a little bit to, to get the file and upload it and catch it all up and everything. Um, so don't worry. You, you should see Something like this. There's about 16,000 events um, over the past. Oh, uh, this is all time. <coughs> Anybody do this and not see this window? I, I know I'm not that good of an instructor. <laughs> oh, still uploading? Okay, all right. So during the lunch break, if you guys want, if your VMs are noticeably being slow or anything, um, I'll, I'll go over adjusting the virtual me machine settings to give it some more resources and make it a little quicker. What is yes. Extractions. extractions is just a way for Splunk to pull in interesting fields from unstructured data. Okay. Is just a is just a classification of for data. I guess it's not even, I, 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 a classification may not be the best word, but it's a way for you to, um, but no, it is, classify it. You can just it's give it a descriptor. Yeah, descri yeah, exactly. I mean, description is a way for the to understand the source. Understand what ex fields it can extract from that data. Okay. And we're going we're gonna to go through a working example of creating an extraction, and you're going to see it in real time. 